how do you even eat a pomegranate? Hello! So I thought it was about time I did another of my mythology anthology transformations. Whoa! Today I've decided to do Persephone, goddess of spring and plants, and the queen of the underworld. She's one of those goddesses that people tend to know a little bit of a story, but not the whole thing. So I thought I'd transform myself into my interpretation of Persephone, while telling you a little bit more about her as we go. So as I said, Persephone is both the goddess of spring and flowers and fertility and all that kind of thing. And she's also married to Hades, who is the king of the underworld, which makes her queen of the underworld as well. She tends to be seen more as this innocent, floaty goddess of spring, but I want to do a bit more of Persephone, the queen of the underworld. And for this today, I'm actually making a whole costume. What? So stick around to see how to make a ball gown in just three steps. Three steps. The character of Persephone is also having a bit of a resurgence. Things like Percy Jackson, the musical Hades Town. Check it out. It's really good. So we are seeing a lot more of Persephone as a character, which is really cool. Because she's also one of those gods that tends to be a bit forgotten about. She's a lot up there with your like Aphrodite, Athena, Zeus, them lot. She's more kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, and Persephone, whoa. So before I get to telling the story, I need to gather some materials. And while I do that, why don't you just uh, head head down there, just hit the, hit the subscribe button. Why not? Why not? I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a second. I'm just going to go and get my, get my stuff. D don't worry, you, you, you've got time. Just, just scroll down and click. Cool. So I'm getting a bit crafty, and if I'm making a costume for Persephone, Queen of the Underworld, of course what she needs is a crown. So here's something I did a little bit earlier. I've got some skewers painted kind of coppery gold, because luxury. What I'm going to do is I am going to cut a... I've made a little tester hole. Put a bit of glue on the bottom of these, stick them in all the way around to make a crown edge shape. So let's start that and get into the story of Persephone. So Persephone is the daughter of Demeter, who is the goddess of nature and the harvest and grain. And Demeter really loves Persephone, like very much, very protective parent, a little overprotective, some may say. Demeter actually raises Persephone away from all the rest of the gods. She has a very sheltered childhood and she's so sheltered, in fact, that her name at that point isn't Persephone. It is Kore or Cora or Kor, however you want to pronounce it. And that translates as the maiden because she was just a innocent child running through fields. Then Persephone gets to marriageable age. And suddenly, all these male gods are like, Hey, sup, Persephone? Oh, the glue gun. Glue guns are ready. To which Demeter is like, Oh, hells no. Hells no. Apollo and Hermes both ask to marry Persephone, as well as lots of the other gods, even ones who are already married. Even they're like, Hey, Persephone. What, what, what? But Demeter says no, and instead sends Persephone away again, even further away from everybody. Says that she is going to be a virgin goddess. She's going to be a maiden virgin goddess all her days, like Artemis and Athena. And sometimes it doesn't really say how Persephone feels about this, whether she's like, kill, or wants to kind of get away a bit. It's never really said. Stories at this point tend to focus more on uh, Demeter rather than Persephone. Or Kore, should I say. Anyway, so Kore is living life away from everybody. In some stories she's sent to a cave and is weaving for years, because what else are you going to do? But it's this point that... Someone else sees Persephone and falls rather madly in love with her, and that is the god of the underworld, Mr. Hades. And so Hades, it said, goes to his brother Zeus, who has to kind of sign off on all godly marriages for reasons, and is like, hey, bro, so Persephone, am I right? Could we maybe, like, do something about that? And Zeus is like, you know what, bro? Yeah, yeah, we can. But they realise that they can never go to Demeter, because Demeter's gonna be like, so they come up with a plan instead that they're going to abduct Persephone and steal her away to the underworld. So the plan is made. So we go back to Kore, who's chilling in a field with some wood nymphs. In some versions, Hades literally just comes out of the ground, just opens up the ground and is like, yo, and just grabs her and runs. Some stories, he plants a narcissus flower that Persephone is then like, check out this flower, goes to pluck it. And then again, Hades just appears out of the ground and goes, Bleh. 
and swallows her down to the underworld. But however it happens, Persephone gets taken to the underworld. Now, on hearing this, Demeter is quite distraught. She's she's not happy because she doesn't know where her daughter's gone. Her daughter has disappeared off the face of the earth. She gets help from um, another goddess, Hecate, who is the goddess of witchcraft and enchantments and sorcery. That's a cool job. That's a cool goddess to be. I want to be the goddess of witchcraft. And Hecate has some magical lamps that shine light into all corners of the earth. Demeter borrows them, shines these lights into every nook and cranny all over the planet. Can't find Persephone anywhere on earth because she's not on earth. She's underneath it. Whoa, in the underworld. Demeter spends quite a long time trying to find Persephone and she spends so much time she actually starts to neglect her goddess duties. The world starts to become a little bit more barren. There's less crops happening and you know things aren't growing as well because Demeter's not making them. She's too busy searching for Persephone. And all the mortals are like, what? But then eventually Demeter learns from Helios who is the sun god and also kind of literally the sun. He sees everything. Helios is like, oh, I know where Doris. She's down in she's down in the underworld in with Hades. And to me it's a bit like, why did you not tell me before? Well, you didn't ask me, so no one asked me no. I just just stay up here doing the sun and whatever, you know, you know, you know I'm I'm fine by the way. But so now Demetra's found out where Corey is. She decides that she's not going to do any of her goddess duties until her daughter has returned to her. So she's literally going to starve all the people of the world until she gets a daughter back. I can hear you saying, but Abby. You're supposed to be telling us about Persephone and you've just been talking about a mum all this time. Come on, what's up with that? So, while all of this is happening, Persephone is down in the underworld. Hades is very much in love with her and is like, you can have all my riches, because Hades is also the god of riches. Builds her a garden so that she can have plants and stuff in the underworld. Let's uh, play with his three-headed dog. You know, just normal stuff when you're trying to impress someone. And she quite likes it down there. Hades is like, you wanna, wanna be my queen? And she's like, yeah, you know. Why not? Suck it, let's do it. In all this time as well, it's important to know, Persephone apparently hasn't eaten anything. Remember that, it will be on the test. That won't be on the test. So by this point, our two storylines converge. So Demeter has found Persephone, she's in the underworld, and has said, no food for the humans until I get my daughter back. Hades is like, but she's my queen and I love her and please don't take her away. Persephone herself is also a bit like, what? But Zeus is like, oh, Soz, sorry, but humans are dying they're told yo hermes is coming to pick you up pack your bags your mom wants you home in some versions hades tricks persephone into this in some versions she does it quite willingly hades offers all right Zephs, you know what you're gonna go but share a pomegranate with me have some of these pomegranate seeds why not and she goes of course nothing nothing odd about that of course i'll eat these pomegranate seeds with you so she eats six pomegranate seeds. At which point Hermes comes to pick her up. Hey Corey, I'm here to take you back to your mum and to the world so the people can eat. And she's like, oh yeah, talking of eating, I've just had these pomegranate seeds. They were like, ace. Hermes and Zeus are like, what? No, you can't eat anything, Persephone, because as soon as you eat something in the underworld, you have to stay there forever. <laughs> Corey is like, well, I didn't know that. Or maybe I did. Who knows? It depends. So technically, she should now have to stay in the underworld forever. But also, all the people are dying. Zeus, who oh, said that weird then? So Zeus comes up with a compromise and says, Right, okay, well, you ate six pomegranate seeds. So you know what? Six months you'll spend in the underworld. A month for each seed you ate. And then the other six months, you got to go home and be with your mum so that the people can eat. Deal? Deal. Most people are not happy with this at all. Hades is like, but my wife. And Demetri is like, but... My daughter. And Persephone is like, D what? But Zeus has decided, so that's it. It's a happening. For six months of the year, Persephone goes queen of the underworld and has a lot of sway down there and by all accounts has a lovely time. And then the other six months, she goes back home to her mum and becomes a goddess of spring, helps the plants grow. And again, by all accounts, has a lovely time. But for the six months that Persephone is in the underworld every year, Demeter still has a bit of a tantrum and decides to not let the people eat. And that is where we get the seasons from. Autumn into winter is when Persephone has gone to the underworld. And then when she comes back in spring, life springs up again because Demeter is happy her daughter's home. And Persephone is the goddess of spring. She brings flowers and stuff with her wherever she goes. Boom. And it's at this point as well that Zeus changes Persephone's name from Cory to Persephone. And the interesting thing that, as I said, Cory or Cor or 
Cora translates as the maiden because she's innocent flower girl. Persephone translates as either the bringer of chaos or the bringer of death. Can you imagine going from being called the maiden to the bringer of chaos? That is the kind of glow up I want. Can I be called the bringer of death? I mean, I hate conflict in all its forms, so I wouldn't be a very good bringer of death, really. I'd be more the goddess of awkward social interactions. But as with all Greek myths, there are several different versions of this story. But first, my crown is complete. Oh, yeah. So, there's different versions I was talking about. For example, there's one version. Hades doesn't even kidnap her. She just wanders into the underworld. She sees the opening, hears the wailing of the lost souls in the underworld, the ones that couldn't afford to cross the river Styx. So she goes down to comfort them and then is like, pretty nice down here. And then I think I'm gonna stay. And so she just stays in the underworld and eventually Hades is like, so um, you've been down here a while. Um, Do you wanna like, you know, maybe? Yes, please. And she's like, yeah. And then we get the whole Demeter looking for her. Zeus is like, you gotta go back. And then another kind of difference is with the eating of the seeds that sometimes it is Hades comes and like tricks her into eating the seeds because he's an evil bad guy. <laughs> sometimes he offers her the seeds and is like, if you eat these, you can stay. Sometimes it's just an accident that she finds a pomegranate and is like, mm, nice. Yummy. Oh no, you ate the seeds by accident. What? And then there's another version I read where she's been dragged out of the underworld by Hermes and on her way out, she grabs a pomegranate and eats it on the way up as they're like, <laughs> can't take me back now. <laughs> These different versions, they paint Persephone in a different light. She's not just a kidnapped victim sitting passively in the underworld. <sighs> Guess I'll wait for someone to rescue me or do something. No, she's autonomous. She's doing stuff. I'm just gonna take this crown off. Now that's. <laughs> complete. I have to leave that to uh, to dry somewhere. Uh, uh, down there. <laughs> so now that I've finished making my crown, the other part of this look, other than my own face, is I said I was going to make a full-on costume, which I am, because I'm doing a Queen of the Underworld look. She needs a queenly gown. Why don't we see how to make a full ball gown in three steps? Take it away, sewing Abby. How to make a ball gown in three easy steps. Step one, find something to act as your body. Ta -da. Step two, get a pair of old curtains. Ta -da. And sew them together down both sides to make one big tube. Ta -da. Now this pair of curtains has these handy little eyelets in them. If your curtains don't have holes or loops or anything like that, step 2.A, where you'll just need to fold over the top and sew it to make a little channel. Because what you're going to do is get a belt and thread it through those holes or loops or eyelets or channel you've just made. On to step three. Put it all on. Top, skirt, instant ball gown. But what if you're looking at your ball gown and you're like, damn it, my hips just aren't freaking wide enough. Oh. What you need is one of these. If, like me, you don't have one of these. Or the necessary skills to make one of these. Here's a very simple solution. For this, you will need another belt, two bags, two kinds of pillows or stuffing or something to act as innards. <gasps> Put your stuffing into the bags. You can use plastic bags or rucksacks or suitcases, but not suitcases because that would be silly. The stuffing, you can use anything lying around, cushions, or the scrunched up plastic bags, a sleeping cat, whatever you have to hand. Get your belt, put it on just below where your skirt is. And obviously put it underneath your skirt, don't put it over the top of the skirt, that would be, that would be weird. Take your two bags and tie them to the belt on your hips. <laughs> and bada bing bada boom. You're ready to go and hit the dance floor at your 17th century ball. Oh yeah. Thanks, Sewing Abby. That was great. Now you may have noticed I've taken my glasses off because while you were enjoying that last little segment, I've been getting all my makeup stuff together because it's time to do my face. So I've talked a bit about the origin story of Persephone, but what happens to Persephone afterwards? Because Persephone's story doesn't just end. She's actually involved in a lot of other stories, which people seem to either forget or not know, or she's like cut out of them, which is weird. Because the thing with Persephone is that, yeah, she starts off as this like very sheltered, innocent flower child, but then she does become this major ruler of the underworld. She is not just Hades' trophy wife. She dishes out punishment 
pyramids and rules definitely like respected and revered and feared by the greeks as well because she was someone you didn't want to mess with yeah she was definitely very respected by the greeks as this kind of symbol of life and death rebirth she's the reason for the seasons she's the reason for the seasons I'm gonna add that to my crying stone album from last time and now the latest album from Abby Bradley, Crying Stone. Also quite kind of sad that a lot of Persephone's stories she does just get erased from and all of the stuff that she does is kind of given to Hades. There's quite a few stories where people go to the underworld and Hades just isn't there. He's out. So they talk to Persephone instead. She's like, you can talk to me. It's fine. I'm a queen. So... One of those stories is of Sisyphus, who basically wanted to cheat death, and he managed to cheat death first by locking Thanatos, the god of death, in a wardrobe. And then when eventually death did come for him, he told his wife to just throw him in the street and leave him out in the street, so that when he finally got down to the underworld, Hades wasn't about that day, it was just Persephone. And he came and was like, my tale of woe, I've not been given a proper burial, my wife is so evil, she just threw me in the street. <laughs> And he says to Persephone, she disrespected you, Persephone. She said, I don't care about Persephone, ruler of the underworld. She's awful and she smells. So bring me back to life, send me back to her and I will, I will punish her every day. And Persephone goes, how dare she? Yeah, I'm going to send you back. And as long as you promise you're going to torture her every single day. And King Sisyphus is like, absolutely. Absolutely, mate. I totally am. He's totally not. But Persephone brings him back to life because she can do that. So that's time she got tricked by Sisyphus. So Sisyphus comes back to life and goes and lives another 50 years very happily with his very loving wife. Right, so what am I actually doing with my face? Persephone, as you can see in the story of Sisyphus, is just as kind of prideful and willing to dole out harsh punishments as any other god is. And some of her other punishments have been just as bad. Although Hades never had an affair, he did have a lover beforehand called Minthe. Minthe? Mint. But once he married Persephone, he got rid of Minthe. He sent her back to the upper world to live up there. It was like, Soz, we're, we're done. I'm married now. But Minthe wasn't particularly happy with this so she would go around telling everybody that he's gonna leave persephone that she's a stupid little flower girl and i'm like really hot i'm more beautiful i'm more noble i'm just better than persephone in every single way which made persephone not too happy she turned minthe into a plant called mint so whenever you're having that cheeky mojito just think you're drinking the corpse of hades ex-girlfriend i'm liking this kind of coppery color because it matches my crown <laughs> So another story of Persephone doling out the punishments to people who disrespect her is the story of Theseus and Pirithus, which just reminds me of Pyramus and Thisbe from Miss and Ice Dream, but that's a different thing. So Pirithus and Theseus were heroes and kings, princes, who decided they wanted some fancy wives. Theseus decided that he wanted Helen of Sparta, not to be confused with Helen of Troy. It's a different gap. Pirithus decided that he wanted Persephone, even though she was already married to Hades. He was like, she could be married to me. Cause you know, that's way better than being queen of the underworld and all the riches and a literal God. Pirithus and Theseus set off on a quest to get these women. Ugh. First they get Helen of Sparta, which is quite easy cause she's just a gal in Sparta. Persephone, slightly harder cause she's in the underworld and a literal God, but you know, male confidence. So they go to the world and they try to kidnap Persephone. She is having none of this. And it's like, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? And so she chains them both to a rock next to the river Styx, where they slowly begin to forget who they are. And they're down there for quite some time until eventually Theseus is rescued by um, Hercules, comes down for a task and sees them both chained to the rock. Theseus is like, yo, dude, get me out of these chains, please, before I like completely lose my mind. And Hercules goes, yeah, all right, mate, freeze Theseus, which Persephone allows him to do. But when he tries to release Pirithus, Persephone is like, no, 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 no. So Pirithus is presumably still there, chained to the rock, no idea who he is. Don't mess with Persephone. I'm going for a lot of like gold and coppers. Cause again, she's queen of the underworld and her husband is god of riches and jewels. I don't think she'd be dripping in jewels because she is the jewel. Gotta frame that. You don't need jewels. You are the jewel.
Persephone did actually have some kids. She famously had a daughter called Melino, the goddess of ghosts and nightmares. What a cool family this is. Your dad is the god of the underworld, your mum is the bringer of chaos, and you're the goddess of ghosts and bringer of nightmares? I might just go and put my top half of my costume on. Okay, so now, let's do my hair. Persephone, she's the goddess of spring, and, and to me, you know, spring isn't perfectly neat and organized. Spring is like wildflowers and vines everywhere and like things springing out. So I feel like she'd be quite a... Uh, messy so i'm just gonna go and sort out this mop then get all me extra little bits i've got a lot of vines i'm gonna try and incorporate i've got this as a extra little detail that it's a wedding ring because she's married to hades but if you look it's a little pomegranate it's a pomegranate ring how perfect is that and there we go and then that will be persephone how well this uh, crown headpiece has stayed together because going outside to take pictures I walked into a lot of door frames I'm also absolutely covered in pomegranate juice that's what happens when you rip a pomegranate open with your bare hands so, yeah, so I've really enjoyed making myself into the goddess of spring and queen of the underworld Ooh, I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about Persephone as well She's one of my favourites. There's something interesting in being seen as two complete opposites at the same time. We'll see you all next time when I'll be doing another god monster Greek figure. Who will it be? Ooh. If you have any requests or suggestions, pop them down below in the comments. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And yeah, I will see you all next time. Bye.